Oh YouTube, it's really good. My name is Ivan, and with the Crown Tundra coming out this week, I've been giving myself little thought experiments about which Pokemon are good to build around. Just coming fresh off of the WWE VGC season, I've been playing a ton of VGC, so I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about Draft League. I'm not so much thinking about laddering, but the thought experiments I've been doing, I think kind of apply to all of these formats, at least a little bit. Uh, and that thought experiment is which Pokemon work really well together that are coming back. Like, I'm mostly looking at Pokemon that are coming back with the Crown Tundra that look good with other other Pokemon from the Crown Tundra, there are some that are sprinkled in there that we already have access to, but a lot of these Pokemon are new, and I've just been thinking which Pokemon pair together really well. Now, this list is by no means going to be comprehensive. This is not going to be every Pokemon that works well together. These are just some of the ones that I have thought about, so I am going to explain them to you right now. I have a few quick things I want to say before I actually break down which Pokemon I believe are good to build around, and the first thing is that if you haven't seen it yet, this Halloween t-shirt I have in my Teespring store is really adorable it is up for a limited time it will be going away on Halloween if you have not yet gone and picked it up and you would like to please go do it soon it is a one-of-a-kind thing you will never see it again my wife Emily designed this she knocked it out of the park it this adorable design is going away on Halloween if you want one go pick it up I'm serious the shirt is the first link in the description down below do not miss out on this the second thing I want to say is if you enjoy watching me here on YouTube you will probably also enjoy watching me live right now I stream every Monday Wednesday and Friday on Twitch it will be the second link in the description down below go over over there give me a follow I would love to see your face when I'm streaming we've been doing a lot of Pokemon content and it has been really fun my streaming schedule will change because I'm planning a YouTube exclusive streaming series that will be starting up within the next week or two I will inform you when that happens but for now every Monday Wednesday and Friday on Twitch find me there I would love to see you the third thing and this is a big one I am going to be doing a lot of Pokemon content, a Crown Tundra, Variety, whatever, and I am super excited, and you should be too, and if you're not already, you should probably subscribe. Most of my views are coming from people who aren't subscribed, and if that's you, click that sub button, it would mean the absolute most to me. Okay, now let's just talk about which Pokemon I think pair really well together, which Pokemon I think are really solid to build around in the Crown Tundra. Really quickly, before we get into breaking down these pairs of Pokemon that I think work really well together, I just wanna ask a question of the day, and the question is going to be, which Pokemon are you excited to build around? I don't care if we're talking about a VGC format, I don't care if we're talking about draft singles, which Pokemon are you excited to build around? Like, what have you built? What have you theory crafted? Let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, now, go. All right, so I'm sure this one was a dead giveaway. It's probably in the thumbnail. A lot of people have already hyped it up, but Galarian Weezing and Regigigas, it might not be the best pairing, it might not take over VGC. In fact, I'm almost certain it will not, but it will be fun and it's an interesting thought experiment as to how good Regigigas would be if it didn't have an ability. So think about it, Regigigas, monstrous stats. The speed and the attack get cut in half for five turns without it. Without that, Regigigas is insane. Regigigas has a base attack of 160, a base speed of 100, and its defensive stats are 110 HP, 110 defense, 110 special defense. I know that this pair is like I said like it's not going to take over the metagame but max strikes have proven to be really good from Porygon Z whose base speed is 90. Regigigas has an attack stat much higher than Porygon Z's special attack stat. It's missing adaptability but Porygon Z would also be missing adaptability with Galarian Weezing in play, so it's got that going for it. Listen, I know this pair is not going to be meta breaking, but I think it is fun. I think people will use it and I think it's going to be in a very niche tier. You know what I mean? I think Regigigas itself also gets a lot of legs this generation because this will be the first generation that Regigigas has access to protect and rest. Two moves that really help it burn through its slow start turns. So call me crazy. I, I think Regigigas one, I think it'll probably be okay in singles. This pair obviously only functions within like a doubles format. So like VGC or a doubles metagame because you have to have Regigigas in play with Galarian Weezing. But that being said, I, I think there's room for this to actually Actually be decent. I'm not saying it's going to be great. I'm saying it's going to be decent. But this was the dead giveaway. And now let's talk about some others that are probably also dead giveaways. And then we'll get into some spicier takes. So what we're essentially talking about in this video is Pokemon that synergize really well together. And a subset of Pokemon that are really high on synergies are the Tapus. You already knew if we were talking about Pokemon that are good to build around and are good to build with, we had to talk about the Tapus. Now these, for the most part, don't have to exist in a doubles format like the Regigigas pick did. 
but all of these tapus like they'll exist in doubles formats they will exist in singles formats these are just good pairs so the first one i'm going to talk about here is tapu coco and zerka tree i think zerka tree is maybe a little bit of a hot pick i just want to kind of explain it tapu coco has brave bird right so it can max airstream which can speed up zerka tree zerka tree's main weakness is that its speed tier is middling i think it's like 84 or 83 it's not super fast zerka tree's special attack set on the other hand is like a hundred and seventy three and it, its speed is 83 so yeah zerka tree has a massive special attack stat it's frail a middling speed stat but the big deal here is tapu coco can actually max airstream if you just lead tapu coco zerk on a board state where like zerk just being able to outspeed something and then rising voltage it would kill you can pull that off i think zerka tree tapu coco has legs for one other reason Okay, so if you think about electric stab, electric is offensively effective against essentially everything except ground. It's immune, like ground is immune. It's weak against dragon, it's weak against electric, and it's weak against grass, right? Zerka Tree's only coverage option, or like not its only, but its main coverage option is energy ball, which means the ground type, you can immediately kind of like erase that immunity a little bit. I mean, don't get me wrong, like Zerka Tree energy balls probably aren't KOing some of the bulkier ground types, but again, its special attack stat is massive. Um, the dragons are covered by Tapu Koko being part fairy type. The electric type is neither here nor there, like neither of these Pokemon have coverage for it. This isn't the point. Grass types are covered by max airstreams from Tapu Koko. And also, I think there's a lot to be said by just brute forcing your way through certain Pokemon that resist with just a supercharged electric terrain boosted rising voltage. I'm not saying that this is going to be meta breaking, I just think it is a good place to start looking in terms of like Tapu Koko synergies. Not that Tapu Koko needs a ton of synergies to build around. I just think maybe Zerka Tree is a little bit more viable because we can actively manage its speed a lot better than we've been able to in different gen like in past generations or in Gen 7. It's the only generation that's been legal in. The next Tapu mashup is going to be Tapu Bulu, and you can also sub Rillaboom in for this one. You cannot sub Pincurchin in for <laughs> Tapu Coco in the last one. Uh, but Tapu Bulu or Rillaboom in Kartana, this is really just an offensive mashup here. There's not really much to be said about them covering the weaknesses that they have. You're really just looking to get really high powered priority grassy glides in. This is a boring pair. It doesn't do much for you. You have to double up on grass types, which is not the best type to be doubling up on. But I think there is just a lot to be said for how hard Kartana hits. Like if I'm gushing about Zerka Tree's special attack stat, that's 173s. I think Kartana has an attack stat of 181. And it also has a better speed tier. I think Kartana having a priority move is really big game. I think that this is something that people are definitely going to use. I don't know what is better here, Tapu Bulu or Rillaboom. Rillaboom gets fake out, Bulu gets like stab play rough. These are both good traits to have. I, I just think that a grassy terrain sort of like Kartana build is going to be viable. Again, not meta breaking. I'm not like busting through boundaries and walls here. I'm just saying these are the thought experiments going on in my head. And I think Kartana and a grassy terrain support mon is going to be able to put out a lot of damage. We've already seen that Rillaboom by itself just choice banded, assault vested, life orbs, uh, grassy seed. Um, what else? There there have been other mashups, but just Rillaboom by itself. It's able to put out insane damage numbers. It doesn't even have to rely on speed tiers because it's a priori priority attack. Kartana does that. It just doesn't set the, it like needs something to set the terrain for it and it just does that better. The last Tapu mashup I'm gonna talk about here, I have one bonus Tapu mashup, but the last one I'm gonna talk about here, and this one is also, I it, it basically could have been Tapu Lele plus Psychic type, but I'm gonna say Tapu Lele plus Alakazam. Alakazam is the Psychic type that has the best speed tier in Sword and Shield. It has an incredible attack stat, and you're just like, this. you don't have to explain this either. It's essentially the same as all of these like the Tapu Koko Zerka Tree build I I'm like a little bit more on board with that one because they kind of cover each other in a way uh, this Tapu Lele Alakazam like I mean don't get me wrong Lele is kind of like the perfect uh Psy spam unit because it also has access to sad fairy type moves which just means it can muscle through dark types which is what you want to be doing a hundred percent like you want to be able to muscle through dark types that you haven't been able to with the Psy spam units we have like in current in, in like in the current vgc build like don't get me wrong like hatterene is an insane like it's an insane pokemon it does a lot of damage but it has to be inside trick room tapu lele alakazam does not 
you don't need Trick Room even a little bit. It's not something you need. You'd probably prefer if Trick Room wasn't up at all. And you just get to click Expanding Force and do a massive amount of damage. I think that this is going to be something that people are going to play with a lot. It might not be busted because a lot of people will probably build to sort of like to prep for it. Uh, but nonetheless, it's going to be strong. Really, like I said, it could have just been Tapu Lele plus Psychic type. I just went for Alakazam here for specifics. The bonus Tapu uh, mashup I have here, and this, I, listen, I think Tapu Fini is more of a support piece. Like, it's not super high on synergy. There's not a lot that pairs with Tapu Fini that's like, reliant on having Misty Terrain up, right? Like Misty Terrain is really great because it minimizes the amount of like RNG. Like you're not getting Scald Burned with Misty Terrain up. You can't be Spored, which is an RNG, but you know what I'm saying. Like Misty Terrain minimizes the amount of secondary effects and statuses you play against. It nullifies them. That's what Misty Terrain is for. I like for the life of me, I think that anything that you want to not be status pairs well with Feeny, right? Like I think Feeny is sort of like the most supportive and probably at its core, the most universal of the Tapus, uh, but not one that I could think of an interesting pair with. I'm sure there's some Misty Explosion shenanigans that I'm missing here. Please feel free in the comment section to just let me know what I should be thinking about doing with Feeny because I'd love to know. Also, Feeny's my least favorite Tapu, so I probably don't care, but let me know anyways. The bonus mashup here, and this is one that I think is really good inside of a draft league format. Um, it's also probably really good on a ladder. I think it's probably viable inside of a sort of like a doubles environment, but that's just going to be Tapu Bulu and again, Rillaboom subs in here. They are kind of interchangeable in a way, um, but that's going to be Bulu plus Heatran. If you've ever played in a draft league, uh, in Gen 7, you probably knew about this mashup, but Bulu Tran is really good. They cover each other's weaknesses almost perfectly. They cover each other's offensive checks almost perfectly. And then to top it all off, like setting grassy terrain means earthquakes are no longer as effective against Heatran. I mean, obviously people run things like Drill Run, Earth Power, etc. But in general, they just cover each other so well that it's worth it. And also, I, I would like to point out here that uh, sort of like a negative side effect of this mashup or this combo of Pokemon in the past has been that their speed tiers are both really middling. Um, they're both fantastic Pokemon, both really, really strong, both really heavy hitters, both bulky. Their speed tiers are, are, are both very middling. Bulu gets to kind of negate this now, once again, because of Grassy Glide. So I think that that's at least worth mentioning. Okay. So these were sort of the easy synergies out of the way, right? Like we got Galarian Weezing, we got Regigigas, we got the Tapus with some mashups, and now I'm trying to dig a little bit deeper. This next idea actually was inspired uh, by Adi. He was in my front office, I've talked about him a lot lately. Big shout outs to the guy, he's very smart. Um, but he actually sent me a team a while back that had Dugtrio and Tentacruel. So the idea here was you would bulldoze with a Dugtrio. Dugtrio has like a speed of 120, so a really good speed tier. You would bulldoze, Tentacruel had clear body, so its speed wouldn't drop. And then you would proc a weakness policy. So I got to thinking, and I'm thinking that you could probably do a similar game plan with something like Metagross. Metagross is inherently, uh, it's already really bulky, right? Like it has fantastic stats all around. Its speed tier is kind of middling and its special attack isn't great, but on the offensive side, really good. I think its speed tier is like 70. I think it's 70 base speed, uh, really high physical attack set. I've been pulling these up like as I'm talking about them. So I have like actual stats in front of me. Okay, so uh, 80 HP, 130 defense, 90 special defense. So really good on the defensive end. You could max Metagross and then just bulldoze the field with Doug Trio. Assuming Dugtrio is the fastest thing in play, you're gonna, like, Metagross probably outspeeds the field. Its speed doesn't get lowered because it's clear body. You proc a weakness policy. Metagross can then go for max steel spikes to raise its defense. It can go for max quakes to raise its special defense. You can also set psychic terrain. Like, there's a lot you could do with this. And just being able to, like, instantly double Metagross's attack stats and also lower the speed of everything around it, I think is worth a look. Alternatively, you could pair Metagross with something like Dust Cops and proc the weakness policy by Shadow Sneaking. I think Metagross is going to be a fantastic weakness policy Pokemon. These are just sort of like the first two interactions I thought of. The Doug Trio bulldozing to lower everything's speed. Your speed stays the same because of clear body. You double your attack stat with weakness policy. And then Dust Cops, you could play a slower, more control-based game where like Dust Cops has, it could ally switch, it could trick room if Metagross 
just would underspeed things in Trick Room. Like it would really just be up to your play style. Uh, but those were my initial thoughts on Metagross in terms of like what to pair it with. I think it could be very solid. I think that Metagross looks to be really good in this format. Just the fact that it has really good max move coverage and also is just a defensive monster that is also very offensive, I, I think is going to go very far. Okay, the next one I dug a little bit deep for, and this is going to be the mashup of Blaziken plus Defiant Mon. But the Defiant Mons I'm specifically talking about here or Tornadus and Thunderous, the Defiant Mon doesn't matter a ton here. You really just want Blaziken plus Defiant Mon. Preferably fast Defiant Mon or Defiant Mon with priority, or I guess even competitive would be good. So maybe like the new Galarian Articuno, the new Galarian Zapdos look good, uh, Milotic. Really the idea here is that a Blaziken that also punishes, like Blaziken paired with something that punishes Intimidate. I think you kind of have to build this way because otherwise, I think even though Blaziken has speed boost, it's probably going to suffer the problem that it just gets overshadowed by Cinderace. Cinderace can effectively, it can feign speed boost for the first three turns it's in play by just maxing. Uh, I think it also is just going to have better damage outputs. I think there is something to be said, like Blaziken, I, I could also see it, to be fair, I could also see it paired with something like Riolu for coaching. That way you get to raise your attack, defense, and speed all in one turn. Um, but I think that pairing it with like a Defiant Mon or sort of like a competitive Mon, I think that goes a long way. I personally, if I was looking at this, I would probably instantly start Tornadus. I think Tornadus would be a really solid pair with it. Uh, Thunderous, I think also is fine. I, th I just like, I think Tornadus is where I would go. That's, that's, that's what my brain is telling me. Um, but the idea here again is you're just trying to make or you're trying to de-incentivize your opponent from intimidating because it really hurts Blaziken if you do that. Again, I don't know that Blaziken is going to be great. A lot of people are hyping it up right now, but the more I think about it, the more I think it just gets overshadowed by Cinderace. I, I could be very wrong here. Like, There's also a lot to be said for Blaziken being able to come in and pick up speed boosts in the late game after maxing has already occurred. Like, There is definitely a lot to be said for that. And I guess there's also a lot to be said for like Blaziken, max turn one, uh, max knuckle, raise my attack at the end of the turn, I raise my speed. Like, That's not something Cinderace can do. I just think that in a vacuum, it looks like it gets overshadowed by Cinderace. I, I would love to be wrong here. I think Blaziken looks really cool to use. I would love if it was good. Um, I just think that right now, Cinderace might be too good. <laughs> it might be too good of an offensive piece. Blaziken probably has a place. I, I think it probably does. But again, I think pairing it with Tornadus and Thunderous just to de-incentivize those Intimidates, I think is going to be very key. All right. I'm digging a little bit deeper on the next one, and this is a mashup that I think, um, also I should mention this, the Blaziken, uh, the Metagross Doug Trio, Dustclops, like that only works in a doubles format. This Blaziken one, this works inside of like any format, realistically, like in singles, you would want something to sort of de-incentivize someone intimidating your Blaziken. The problem is in singles, Blaziken's gonna get banned. <laughs> it's, you're not gonna see speed boost Blaziken inside draft leagues or on the Smogon ladder. It's just, it's gonna get banned. Um, the next two should be band proof, and I think will work inside of doubles format and singles formats. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is Celesteel plus Seismitoad. This one is maybe a little bit of a stretch. This is also kind of insinuating that you're playing on a rain team. Uh, Celesteel's only weaknesses here are going to be fire and electric. Seismitoad is really good at covering both of those. Seismitoad is a great defensive pivot. It's a great offensive check to the things that offensively threaten Celesteel. I think Seismitoad and Celesteel pair, pair really well. You could also say something like Gastrodon. I was just thinking taking like a more offensive approach and sort of like checking the things that are good against Celesteela. So Seismitoad inside the rain, I think has proven or I want to believe it's proven to be like a pretty versatile sweeper. It has good coverage. It has great max moves. Um, so yeah, I think Seismitoad and Celesteela cover each other really well. I This is a parry I would be very excited to use. I love Celesteela. I think that there's something about this massive flying temple just going for leech seeds that really does it for me. And I love Seismitoad. So this pair, I think, is the one I'm probably most excited about. It's the one that I would probably try to build with right off the bat. Um, it's maybe not super obvious. Like, it's definitely not as obvious and printed out as Tapu Koko plus Electric type or Rillaboom plus Grass type or Lele plus Psychic type, right? But I think that it, it potentially has a lot of value. It has a lot of merit. And then 
the next pair is sort of similar. I was just trying to think of ways to abuse these Pokemon. These Pokemon that I think have legs to be fantastic in this format. Um, or, or not legs in Solid Steel's case, but uh, <laughs> it's just these Pokemon that I think have the potential to be really good in this format. The next pair is Stack Attacka plus Primarina. Stack Attacka, I think, is a fantastic Trick Room piece um, in this format. I think Stack Attacka, if you max it, it's probably going to be living a ton of hits. It's incredibly bulky. It has a pretty reasonable attack stat to like just to pair with all of these things, but also it gets access to Body Press this generation. You get Heavy Slam, you get Heat Crash. The last two aren't great against other max Pokemon, but outside of being maxed, these are going to do a ton of damage. You also just get a really strong max Steel Spike and a really strong max Flare from Stack Attacka, which I think is worth kind of a lot here. And the, to pair with it, I'm pairing it with Primarina because Primarina covers essentially everything Stack Attacka doesn't want to see. Stack Attacka is weak against exactly water, fighting, and ground. But fighting and ground, it's 4x weak against those things. Primarina is resistant to water and its stabs are super effective against exactly fighting and ground. I mean, they're super effective against more than that, but you get the point. I think Primarina offensively checks the things that are good against Stack Attacka in a way that pairs really well, makes like a nice little like fairy steel core. You throw a dragon on the team, you have a nice fairy dragon steel core going. I think this looks really good. Primarina is also something you can use inside Trick Room. Its speed tier is not fantastic. I mean, it's not a premier Trick Room speed tier, but I think it's good enough to pair with Stack Attacka. Obviously, uh, Stack Attacka plus Redirection. So Stack Attacka plus like Togekiss or something to like redirect turn one and then go for Trick Room, I think would be kind of nuts. I think Stack Attacka looks like it, it has a shot at being very good in this format. And that is it. These are all the pairs that I have come up with. Let me know which pairs you are interested in in the comment section down below. What have you been building? What have you been theory crafting? I am super interested. I think that this was just a fun thought experiment for me to kind of like dig into the Pokemon that are coming back, look at them, look at their strengths and weaknesses, try to see what we could pair with those. And I'm interested in what you were doing in the same vein. I don't care if we're talking about Draft League, Smogon Laddering, or the VGC format. What do you think is going to be good? What pairs of Pokemon are you building around? Let me know. That is it. It means the absolute most to me that you decided to spend some time here with me today. If you enjoy this style of video, let me know by leaving a like on this video. That would mean the absolute most. Once again, don't forget the t-shirts, my Twitch, subscribe if you're new here, and those are my things. Thank you so much, once again, for spending all this time with me here. Uh, I feel like I'm thanking my audience a lot lately because my audience is growing and it's really exciting for me and I just want you to know it means a lot. But that being said, I'm kind of done here and I have to leave. Okay, bye. Oh, you made it to the end of the video. That's dope. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you would like to see more from me and make it to the end of those videos, there will be a video here and a video here. This one is a video that I think is really good, and this is what YouTube recommends, so you should watch one of them. Okay, thanks.